Vishnupad Paramahansa Padavajakacharya Stotra Dis of the Shri Shimana Divine Grace Sesi Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Pabupad Ki Jai Iskan Bibidi Founder Charya Srila Pabupad Ki Jai Jayam Vishnupad Paramahansa Padavajakacharya Stotra Dis of the Shri Shimana Divine Grace Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Ananta Guri Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai Nama Charya Shlahadadas Stakur Ki Jai Prem Sikaho, Shukishna Chaitanya, Prabhuna Chananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasudhi, Gauda Bhakta, Vrinda Kijai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna, Gogopina, Shamakunda, Radha Kunda, Giri Gopadan Kijai. Vrindavan Dham Kijai, Nabhadeep Mayapur Dham Kijai, Ganga Jamunamai Kijai, Tulasi Devi Maharani Kijai, Samabeda Bhakta, Vrinda Kijai, Harinam Sankirtan Kijai, Brihat Madanga Kijai. All glorious to the assembled devotees, all glorious to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Sri Guru and Garanga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, chapter two, we're up to text eight. The title, chapter is entitled, Remembrance of Lord Krishna. And this is Uddhava, who is speaking this morning. Dorbago Bata Lokaha Ayam Yadavo Nitaram Api Ye Sambhasanto Na Vidur Harem Mina Ivod Dupam Durbago Bataloko Yam Durbago Bataloko Yam Yadavo Nitaramapi Yadavo Nitaramapi Ye Sambhasanto Navidur Ye Sambhasanto Navidur Harem Mina Ivo Dupam Harem Mina Ivo Dupam Dorbago Bataloko Yam Yadavo Nitaramapi Ye Sambhasanto Navidur Harem Mina Ivo Dupam Vaishnavis.
Durbagaha, unfortunate. Bata, certainly. Lokaha, universe. I am this. Yadavaha, the Yadu dynasty. Nitaram, more specifically. Api, also. Ye, those. Sambhasantaha, living together. Na, did not. Vidu, understand. Hadem, the personality of Godhead. Minaha, the fishes. Eva, Udu, Eva, sorry, Eva Udapam, like the moon. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. This universe with all its planets is most unfortunate. And even more unfortunate are the members of the Yadu dynasty because they could not identify Lord Hari as the personality of Godhead any more than fish could identify the moon. Purport. Uddhava lamented for the unfortunate persons of the world who could not recognize Lord Sri Krishna in spite of seeing all his transcendental godly qualities. From the very beginning of his appearance within the prison bars of King Kamsa up to his Masola, Masolya Lila. Say it again. Mosala. Mosala Lila, thank you. Although he exhibited his potencies as the personality of Godhead, in the six opulences of wealth, strength, fame, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation, the foolish persons of the, of the world could not understand that he was the Supreme Lord. Foolish persons might have thought him an uh, extraordinary historic figure, but they had no intimate touch. But, sorry, but, so, sorry. Foolish persons... Uh, might have thought him an extraordinary historic figure because they had no intimate touch with the Lord. But more unfortunate were the family members of the Lord, the members of the Yadu dynasty, who were always in company with the Lord, but were unable to recognize him as the supreme personality of Godhead. Uddhava lamented his own fortune also, because although he knew Krishna to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he could not properly use the opportunity to render devotional service to the Lord. He regretted everyone's misfortune, including his own. The pure devotee of the Lord thinks himself most unfortunate. That is due to his excessive love for the Lord and is one of the transcendental perceptions of viraha, the suffering of separation. It is learned from the revealed scriptures that the moon was born from the milk ocean. There is a milk ocean in the upper planets. And there, Lord Vishnu, who controls the heart of every living being as Paramatma, the super soul, resides as the Shiradakshai Vishnu. Those who do not believe in the existence of the ocean of milk because they have experience only of the salt, salty water in the ocean should know that the world is also called go, which means the cow. The urine of a cow is salty, and, the, and according to Ayurvedic medicine, the cow's urine is very effective in treating patients suffering from liver trouble. Such patients may not have any experience of the cow's milk, because milk is never given to liver patients. But the liver patient may know that the cow has milk also, although he has never tasted it. Similarly, men who have experience only of this teeny planet where the saltwater ocean exists may take information from the revealed scriptures that there is also an ocean of milk, although we have never seen it. From this ocean of milk, from this ocean of milk the moon was born, but the fish in the milk ocean could not recognize that the moon was not another fish and was different from them. The fish took the moon to be one of them, or maybe something illuminating, but nothing more. The unfortunate persons who do not recognize Lord Krishna are like such fish. They take him to be one of them, 
although a little extraordinary in opulence, strength, etc. The Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, text 11, confirms such foolish persons to be most unfortunate. Abhijananti mamudha manusim tanamashrita. Omagana timadam desha jananjana shalakaya chakshur namilitam yena tasma shri gudave namaha. Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam, Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Swai Mupakadamayam Dadati Swa Padantikam. So as I said, this is Uddhava who's speaking and he's expressing his feelings to Vidura. And specifically he's saying how according to his perception, uh, he's seeing that the universe and all its planets are unfortunate. And he's even seeing he's seeing the uh, members of the Yadu dynasty, uh, or dynasty, uh, as unfortunate. Uh, and, he's in, and he's feeling even himself unfortunate. But I think a key word here is perception. In the last sentence of the first paragraph, Papa says, due to excessive love for the Lord, uh, he's, he, uh, this is, his, well, the, the pure devotee of the Lord thinks himself most unfortunate. That is due to excessive love for the Lord and is one of the transcendental perceptions of Varaha, the suffering of separation. So a perception isn't necessarily a reality. I mean, it's a reality in the sense that, that it's a subjective reality. He's feeling like that. But it, it's one could argue that's not actually the case, that if certainly in, 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 the, uh, in terms of Uddhava, he's feeling himself unfortunate. But is Uddhava actually unfortunate? <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, Uddhava is one of the topmost devotees of Krishna. He's right up there. I mean, you know, there's the gopis, and then Nanda Maharaj, Madhya Yasoda, and then Uddhava. I mean, well, you know, if, I mean, and then that's not necessarily in hierarchy. I'm just saying he's right up there with the, the greatest devotees of Krishna. So he's not unfortunate. And, uh, but he's feeling himself like that. That's a symptom or, uh, of this, what Prabhupada refers to as varaha. Uh, varaha means separation. It's a, a mood, a mode and a mood or uh, an attitude of, in which devotees worship Krishna. Um, the other most, the other, the only other mood that I'm aware of that Prabhupada talks about is Samboga. There's, sometimes Varaha is referred to as Vipralamba, and sometimes you hear Prabhupada talk about Samboga and Vipralamba, Seva, okay, service. So uh, Vipralamba or Varaha is service in separation. And Samboga is service in union. Samboga. Together we enjoy. Samboga. So, uh, Lord Chaitanya taught that of the two, the um, Vipralamba Seva was preferable. Devotees could, because of the intensity of the feelings in that Vipralamba or Varaha Seva, enables the devotee to actually experience um, a more intimate relationship with the Lord. So the followers of Lord Chaitanya try to cultivate this uh, Vipralamba Seva or Varaha, this mood of Varaha. Okay? So Uddhav is feeling this. He's feeling Varaha, separation. It's a transcendental perception. It's a mood. Uh, like I could say a rasa. Or anyway, feeling. And he's feeling that uh, he's unfortunate. He's, fe he's feeling the, the Yadus, the members of the Yadu dynasty are unfortunate. Um, well, once again, that's a perception. I mean, the Yadu, members of the Yadu dynasty, you could, one could say, I, I mean, my understanding, they're not as fortunate as Uddhava. You know, the Uddhava, as I said, Uddhava was way up there. I mean, he was a very confidential friend of Krishna's. I mean, Krishna sent him to Vrindavan to observe the gopis. Krishna asked him for advice, right, before, you know, before attacking Jarasandha and that whole pastime there. So, you know, Uddhava's very confidential, intimate devotee. 
of Krishna. And the, the Yadavas, they were also pretty special. I mean, he's, okay, he's making the point here that they weren't able to recognize Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but uh, elsewhere it's stated, I actually, to be honest with you, I think it's just further on in this chapter, so it might even be stated by Uddhava himself that it says the the, Yadava, the Yadus therefore accepted Lord Krishna as the super soul incarnated in their family and not more than that. So, that ain't bad. I mean, okay, <laughs> their realization of Krishna was not to the level of, of um, Uddhava's, but, you know, to be able to accept Krishna as the super soul incarnated in your family, that's how, I mean, that's, that's pretty elevated. So, and, and elsewhere, in other places, it says the Yadu dynasty was famous all over the world because Krishna took his birth in the Yadu dynasty. The Yadus were perfectly tr uh, trained, civilized persons. Uh, Krishna displayed special attachment for, the family, for his family members, the Yadus. Um, it was only for their interest that he appear in the family of his unalloyed devotees, the Yadus. So in other words, once again, this is a perception. The Yadus are... Not really unfortunate. I mean, I think any of us might settle to be a, a Yadu. <laughs> but that's how he was, you know, Uddhava's uh, Uda feeling. And, and Prabhupada uh, expands upon Uddhava's statement in the translation here in his purport. He says, Uddhava lamented for the unfortunate persons of the world who did not recognize Lord Krishna in spite of seeing all his transcendental godly qualities. So he's kind of elaborating upon what Uddhava said, said that well, the universe and all its planets is most unfortunate. I guess that includes all the people in it. So Prabhupada's justified, of course, in, in making that statement. So that is also his perception. That it could be argued that that's accurate. Uddhava is not unfortunate. The Uddhava's while not as fortunate as Uddhava, were not really unfortunate. But the general people of the world who could not recognize Lord Krishna in spite of seeing all his transcendental godly qualities, they are unfortunate. <laughs> okay? They are unfortunate. And, uh, let's see here. There's something in this first paragraph I wanted to say something about. Well, yeah, okay, so they're unfortunate. And Prabhupada uh, kind of gives some insight into the nature of their misfortune in the second paragraph, where he talks about how um, the moon appears from the milk ocean. And he makes the point that there, the milk, there's no milk ocean on this planet but there's a milk ocean according, there's a milk ocean in the higher, what does it say, the upper planets. But people in general, it says here, they, those who do not believe in the existence of the ocean of milk because they have experience only of the salt water, salty water in the ocean. See, so most people are going by their experience. They, they accept as true what they have experience of. And therefore, they're not, they don't believe in the existence of the ocean of milk. But Prabhupada says that later on in that same paragraph, he says, Men who have ex experience only of this teeny planet where the salt water ocean exists may take information from the revealed scriptures that there is an ocean of milk. So that's the remedy. You see? People are unfortunate in general. They can become fortunate if they, to start off with, take information from the revealed scriptures that there is a notion of milk, a supreme personality of Godhead, a Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, etc., etc., etc. That's the beginning. That's the first step. They have to take information from the revealed scriptures because from your experience, you ain't going to understand very much. You know, um, 
So that's there. Then, then, those, then, then people can become fortunate. Um, I'll just mention this real quick. You know, in the class we heard on Sunday, Papa was talking about how the vultures can fly very high and they could, they could see a dead body from 20, well, he said four miles in the class. And I was thinking to myself, I don't know what I was thinking. What? That sounds like impossible. That's, but I looked it up and sure enough, there, there is a, there's different types of vultures and there was one type of vulture called the turkey vulture and they, they cruise at 20,000 feet above sea level which is approximately four miles, a little less and it's even according to the, you know, the scientists so to speak or whatever uh, they have a very keen sense of smell they can smell a dead body from a mile or two away and they can, uh, they can see you know, from the four miles up, they can spot. You know, it didn't specifically say four miles, but it said they have very keen eyesight, and from great, great distances, they can spot their prey. I guess you could say. So, you know, how would you know that? You know, it's like for most things, you have to take knowledge from a higher authority. Uh, you know, even for to even in this world, for ordinary things, how would you know that a, a, there's a, a bird that can do that? Only from those who know. So in the same way, there's certain things that are just beyond experimentation and that knowledge, to acquire knowledge of those things, you have to take knowledge from the revealed scriptures. So on that note, um, this, is a very, this is very relevant. Prabhupada talks in the Nectar of Instruction, which is Rupa Goswami's book, it's originally called Upadeshamrita, the nectar of instruction. Prabhupada translates it as. And um, in text 7, it's talking about the importance of uh, chanting the holy name. Rupa Goswami is making the point that um, the holy name, character, pastimes, and activities of Krishna are all transcendentally sweet like sugar candy. Although the tongue of one afflicted by the jaundice of avidya, ignorance, cannot taste anything sweet, it is wonderful that simply by carefully chanting these sweet names every day, a transcendental relish awakens within his tongue, and his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. So in his uh, purport, Prabhupada says that about these unfortunate people, he says, people, people never surrender to Krishna People who never surrendered to Krishna and who, po and who oppose the endeavors of those who wish to take shelter of Krishna. When such atheists become leaders of society, the entire atmosphere is surcharged with nescience. In such a condition, people do not become very enthusiastic to receive this Krishna consciousness movement. Just as a diseased person suffering from jaundice does not relish the taste of sugar candy. However, one must know that for jaundice, sugar candy is the only specific medicine. Similarly, in the present confused state of humanity, Krishna consciousness, the chanting of the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, is the only remedy for setting the world aright. See, so here Prabhupada's giving us his transcendental opinion that for, for these unfortunate people, if they take information from the Vedic scriptures, you know, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Evikavalam, right? And they accept that and they take to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra that that's the remedy and that will set the world aright. Okay, and Prabhupada goes on to say in his purport, he says, although Krishna consciousness may not be very pal palatable for a diseased person, Sri Rupa Goswami nonetheless advises that if one wants to be cured of the material disease, he must take to it with great care and attention. One begins his treatment by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And here is the reason why we will, should chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Prabhupada says, um, because by chanting the holy name of the Lord, a person in the material condition will be relieved from all misconceptions. And then he quotes in parentheses, he says, Cheto Dharpana Marjanam, which is the first line of the first of uh, Shashashtika prayers. And uh, Cheto means consciousness. Darpana is 
mirror and marjanam is cleansing. So there's the chanting cleanses the mirror of the mind. It cleanses the consciousness and it relieves one of misconceptions. And in the last sentence, Prabhupada goes on to say, avidya, a misconception. That's probably the first, it's, and it's certainly one of the foremost misconceptions that we, you know, we have to deal with. Avidya means ignorance. Uh, uh, okay, avidya, a misconception about one's spiritual identity provides the foundation for a hunkar or false ego within the heart. See? So in other words, it's like a causal relationship there. Uh, in order to have a hunkar, you gotta first have a vidya. Right? So if we can get rid of a vidya, that ignorance of our spiritual identity, then you're gonna become free from a hunkar, false ego. So that and how do you get rid of a vidya? Chaitodarpa by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. So in other words, there is hope for the unfortunate people of the Kali Yuga, according to the Shastras. It's not hopeless. The hope is if they take to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, then they will experience uh Chaito Dharpana Marjana. They'll experience a cleansing of the consciousness and they'll become proportionately, you know, to how serious they take it, free from avidya, and when you come when you get rid of a vidya, then you get rid of a hunkar, and then you understand. Then the false ego goes away, and then you're left with real ego. I am the eternal servant of Krishna. So, yeah. Now, the big question is, though, will people do it? <laughs> will people take to this chanting? Because according to Prabhupada, it's the cure. He says, it's powerful. It, it, is the, it is the only remedy for setting the world aright. So it is a remedy, but will people take to the chanting? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, according to the scriptures, they will. Prativite, achayata, nagara, digram, sarvacha, prachaira, hoibe, mornam, that Lord Chaitanya predicted that in every town and village, my name will be chanted or heard like that and there's other statements to that effect that you know the the Hare Krishna mantra or the Hare Krishna movement the chanting of congregational chanting of the holy names will increase over the next the potential for that is there over the next 9,500 years the golden age of Lord Chaitanya we're only 500 years into it 9,500 years left so that's you know supposed to happen Will, will it happen in our lifetime? Um, I don't know. It'd be nice if it happened within our lifetimes. For some of us, that'll be it's less likely than others because some of us don't have a lot of lifetime left. <laughs> but uh, hopefully. But an even more important question is, then, you know, will the world take to the chanting? Is, will we take to the chanting? We'd like to see the world take to the chanting. That'd be nice. That's kind of like, okay, great. That'd be wonderful. We'd really feel good. But even more important, will we take to the chanting? If it's a very big, crucial thing. Prabhupada says here, just referring to that phrase again, he said, it's the only remedy for setting the world aright. So when I read that, I, it took me a few, a few minutes actually before it sunk in, but then I, my, my slow brain remind, you know, did a, a logical calculation. I said, wait a second. If the, Hare, if the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra is powerful enough to set the whole world aright, certainly it could at least set me aright. <laughs> I mean, it's that powerful that Prabhupada's saying it's the only remedy to set the whole world aright. Something, something that's powerful enough to set the whole world aright certainly should be powerful enough to at least set one aspiring devotee aright. So you know, I just immediately thought to myself, I've got to take shelter of this chanting. It's so powerful. It can set the whole world aright. So this is the solution to all my problems. So 
yeah, we should very, take very seriously to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra as that which will save us. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, Enechio Sodi Maya Nasi Bado Lagi Hari Nama Maha Mantra Lautumi Magi. He said, I have brought the medicine which will wipe out the disease of illusion from which you are suffering. That's the power of the Hare Krishna Mantra. It can wipe out the disease of illusion. Same thing, the avidya, you know, of illusion from which we're suffering. So we have to, each one of us has to, you know, have a program that for very seriously taking shelter of the holy name. Uh, Japa, Kirtan, in the temple, kirtan, you know, all those things. Extremely important. And, uh, you know, at the last, at the last stage of his life, Bhakti Thakur, he, he didn't do the same thing as Prabhupada. Well, Prabhupada didn't do the same thing as Bhakti Thakur, but Bhakti Thakur in the last two or three years of his life, I'm not... I just researched it this morning, so I know it said, it said a couple of years, a few years. He locked himself away. You know, he didn't do like Papa. You know, Papa was preaching right up till the end. He was interacting with his devotees. And, but Bhaktivinoda Thakur, for, the, for the, that final, final stretch period of his life, he didn't give an exact you know, number of days, weeks, and months, so to speak, but he locked himself away. He said, it actually said in one of the biography I was reading, behind locked doors. And what did he do? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. He was just taking shelter of the holy name. You know, he was, he took just completely, he, he, he walked his own talk. You know, he preached that to people that that's what, you know, that you do. That was his song, you know, about a nature, O Sodi Maya, it's one of his songs. And he did it, you know. So he showed us, and he's an Acharya. So if, if you know, somebody might, think, well, we have to follow in the footsteps of Prabhupada. If you can do that, more power to you. What Prabhupada did was absolutely amazing, you know, to, to continue his devotional service and not just continue it in a way that, and this is not to say Prabhupada's in some way greater than the Bhaktivinoda Thakur, just because it's all, with these great, great, great devotees, it's, 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 it's Leela. But Prabhupada did something that's, when you stop and think about it, it's absolutely amazing. Not only did he continue to engage in devotional service right up till the end, but he did something even, he did it in a difficult way. He was preaching. You know, he, he was available to devotees. He didn't just kind of, you know, okay, he didn't just, I would just say, withdraw and say to everybody, okay, you know, now I just got to focus. No, he just, he, he was kind of interacting with his devotees towards the end. That must have made, you know, made things even more difficult. Made, you know, a greater tapasha. Anyway, but the point being though, we have to take shelter. Bhaktivinoda Thakur did that. He did do that. And I think that's also, you know, amazing. Um, Well, I'd like to share with everybody one experience I just had recently with the holy name, the chanting. Um, at the beginning of the marathon, how am I doing for time? Okay, okay. At the beginning of the marathon, um, the devotee Damodar Kumar from San Diego came up here and he wanted to go to the... Um, Comic Con. So, but he couldn't stay the whole day. So that we, somehow or another, I wanted to facilitate. I didn't really want to go because I, my memory of it wasn't so, that it was so sweet, but I wanted to facilitate him. So we made this arrangement that he would go, Dave Rutter would drop him off down at the Staples Center and I would show up there whatever, 10.30, 11 o'clock, you know, after the morning program, and this, I would show up, and I would distribute there from, with him for a while, and then leave. And then he would leave, sorry. He would leave to go do what he had to do, and I would just take over. So, 
he went. I showed up when I said I would, and I kind of, you know, parked the car, and I was there with him, and I was trying to distribute. And we had a table set up, and he had a nice table set up. It was very nicely set up and everything. And uh, wow, it was so hard. And, you know, if, I mean, I, I've experienced multiple times how powerful a table is and how good you could do practically any place with the table. Anyway, this spot was like impossible. It was impossible. And the people, I mean, it was all I could do just to get, actually I couldn't even do it. People felt, I could see people thought they were doing me a really big favor if they just grabbed a book out of my hand and kept walking. What to speak of, you know, stopping, coming over to the table, being able to, was, so I tried it for about like 20 minutes, half hour. So, you know, you don't want to just give up. You, sometimes Krishna's testing you or whatever. So I thought, okay, I've got to at least try this. So I gave it all I had for about 20 minutes, half hour. And then after, and, but nothing. It was like, you know, knocking your head against a brick wall. So after about, you know, that time, I just went to Dhammadar Kumar. I said, Dhammadar Kumar, I said, pack up. I said, I'm going to go get the car. You pack up. We're getting out of here. I said, this is a waste of time. You know, I'm not doing this. And um, I kind of felt bad because, you know, you don't like to give up on Sankirtan because Krishna can do anything. And uh, that's our philosophy. And, it's, of course, it's true. But uh, anyway, I just, it was all I, I had what I could, all I could take. So he packed up, and I went and got the car. And we, you know, and I drove him back here to the temple, and I dropped him off. But before that happened, as we were driving back, you know, I was feeling kind of a little bit bad because, you know, you know, you know didn't stick it out. But we were on the highway, on the 10, and I started chanting, you know, just I finished my rounds, but I just started chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare, as I was driving. And as I was chanting, all of a sudden, I really kind of like got a taste for the chanting. I was just like, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I mean, something was, you know, it was like, whoa. And I it went for about a minute or two, and I, and I, I couldn't, I was going, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, whoa. I mean, I was enjoying, the, relishing the chanting, but I, th- I had to, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Whoa, whoa, why am I experiencing this, this sudden taste for the chanting. And, um, and then the thought came to my mind, I mean, it's, I didn't, it's not like I had some big success, or I mean, what, quite the contrary, I, I gave up. <laughs> I'm driving back, I, gave, I threw in the towel, you know, so why? And the only thing that could come, came to my mind was that, uh, you know, Krishna was pleased that I made the decision to try to work smarter, not harder. That's the only thing I could come up with, you know? Uh, but you know, the, the, as I said, the chant, the Krishna. I was, I was feeling really like a lot of uh, potency from the chanting, and so I kind of thought, well, okay, maybe that's the case. That's, that's, you know. So anyway, so I dropped him off, and then I decided, okay, well, you know, it's still early in the day, so I went to a parking lot and I did some sankirtan there, book distribution there, and. Um, you know, that went okay. And then I thought, well, okay, let me think more. I th- maybe, you know, Krishna's given me a real, the chanting was revealing this, this that realization works. Sm- what could be even smarter than dealing with people one-on-one as opposed to just like a big st- herd stampede? I said, well, you know, what about people already favorable? So I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. So anyway, so that was right at the beginning of the marathon. So we still had the schools to do. So I was doing the schools, but then I just decided, let me go through all my contacts See, the marathon's over now, so I'm revealing my secret. Okay. So let me go through all my contacts. So one by one, I, I, I went th- had my phone, you know, and I went through all the contacts that I had, and I was just telling people about what we're trying to do here in New Dwarka, you know, distribute so many books by the end of the month, and, and what, the, you know, our goal as a, f- for the year, and, you know, for the whole world like that. And I, I just said to those people, people I already knew, from, you know, one year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you know, it was going way back to when I first got here. And, um, and I just say, well, you know, uh, I'm sure you'd like to help with something like this. Would you like to distribute the books yourself? Or uh, a lot of the people I've been 
talking to that's they don't feel that's practical for them so they just they decide they prefer to sponsor books and we'll distribute it for you you know we'll distribute it in your name or on your behalf and practically everybody would say well no no you I'll, I'll just give a donation you can distribute them on on our behalf so i was doing that and wow it just like a lot of response a lot of donations like that so anyways i just felt like this whole thing was kind of you know revealed I, like it wasn't an accident to just and then just the way the, the that idea came and then the, the, the potency of the success of in the execution I just feel like it's you know the Hare Krishna mantra is alive <clears throat> you know it's not just some like it's alive it's Krishna and we when you take shelter of the mantra it reveals things uh, just like Prabhupada used to quote that verse, Atak Shri Krishna Namadi na Bhaved Gurayam Indriye. You know, Krishna can't be understood by the blunt material senses. In other words, Krishna can't be understood by trying to just using your mind and tell to try to figure things out. But Seva and Mukhe hi jiva do. As I said, I think in the last class, Seva means service, Mukhe means mouth, he means certainly. Jiva is tongue, ado first, and then Svayam Eva Sparatida. Krishna reveals. So we take shelter of the chanting of the holy name, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and Krishna reciprocates. He reveals. He gives. He, he, that reciprocation can come in the form of a, a taste for chanting, and it could also come in the form of realization. Um, what's that in the in the Shashastika? Vidya Vadu Jivanam. It's it's the life of transcendental knowledge. See? So. In conclusion, that's the hope. The hope is taking shelter of the Hare Krishna, Maha Mantra. If there's any hope for this world, that's the hope. As I said, whether they'll do it or not, I don't know. But if they do do it, it things will work. And it's, it's their hope, and it's, certain, it's the hope for us, too. You know, We should take shelter of the holy name. <clears throat> that will uh, make us blissful. You know, Rupa Goswami says that. He says right here, it is wonderful that simply by carefully chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens within his tongue and his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. So if you're thinking like, well, I've been chanting now for a while. Um, you know, I'm not really experiencing anything special. Keep chanting. Keep chanting. That's, Rupa Gos that's not my advice. That's Rupa Goswami's advice. Rupa Goswami says right here that you know, if you keep chanting, a natural relish awakens with, will awaken within our tongue and our disease will gradually be destroyed at the root. So that's you know, there. And the other thing is Vijavadu Jivanam. It's the life of transcendental knowledge. So we'll both get pleasure and realization just through this process of chanting. So I'll stop there. Does anybody have any question? Yeah, Madhav Mahotsva. And then he says, Dordaiva Mridishi Anuraga, that I'm so unfortunate that I have no desire to chant these names, even though the names are full of all potency. And, and that's a way, you know, it, it seems like it's an indirect way of having people check in and be like, wow, if Lord Chaitanya said that, or if Uddhava thinks he's unfortunate, man, I'm terrible. Instead of, you know, doing it the direct way and saying, you guys are going all to hell. I'm very fortunate you're unfortunate, you know. People put up their defenses, but if they say, I'm, or like uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Amar Jivana Sade Paparata, that my life is full of sins, and I'm, you know, that's Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he's talking about all his problems and all, you know, but he's putting himself in the shoes of like an ordinary person. And any devotee's gonna be like, that's not true about Bhaktivinoda Thakur, but he's just feeling that humility, and he's also teaching in an indirect way. So that yeah. the lay people can be like, wow, if Lord Chaitanya said he's unfortunate and Bhaktivinoda Thakur said he's unfortunate, Uddhava says he's unfortunate, then I'm really terrible. And like, 
I, you know, I, I should do something about that. You know, rather this is, than this is a comment you're making. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that was I was just thinking like that. Yeah. Well, that's good thinking. <laughs> Let's see. I think I, I had a couple of references here. I could share them really quickly with everybody about the, this Baraha. Um, okay, here we go. Vaishnava is always firmly situated in transcendental bliss because of his engagement in devotional service. Although he may appear to suffer material pains, his position is called transcendental bliss and separation, varaha. The emotions a lover and beloved feel when separated from one another are actually very blissful, although apparently painful. Therefore, the separation of Lord Ramachandra from Sita Devi, as well as the consequent tribulation they suffered, is but another display of transcendental bliss. This is just to give us some further insight into this. That is the opinion of Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. And one more. Oh, this is a good one. This is a really good one. When the living entity feels spiritual separation from Krishna, Krishna Varaha, he has achieved the prime success of life. When one becomes disinterested in material things, he is simply experiencing the other side of attraction for material things. However, feeling separation from Krishna and engaging in the service of the Lord to fulfill his mission constitute the best example of love of Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to point out this intense love of Krishna exhibited by Madhavendra Puri. All Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's devotees later followed in the footsteps of Madhavendra Puri, serving the Lord without personal consideration. So just, you know, a couple things about that Viraha. Okay, I think we could end there. Thank you very much. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai, Srila Prabhupada Kijai.